The month of December brings us the opportunity to recall the anniversary of the founding of the Sisters of Mercy. On December the 12th, 1831, in Ireland, Catherine Macaulay pronounced her vows as a Sister of Mercy, and in doing so established a new religious order. There is another founding story which takes place on December the 12th, 1531, in the Valley of Mexico. It is here that amidst the chaos and destruction of Spanish domination and conquest of the Aztec Empire, the defeated indigenous people cry out in desperation. We wander here and there in our desolate poverty. We have seen bloodshed and pain. We are crushed to the ground. We lie in ruins. There is nothing but grief and suffering in Mexico. It is at that moment that their cries and lamentations are answered. As the story is told, a poor Indian man named Juan Diego passes by a sacred hill once dedicated to Tonantzin, the venerable mother and goddess of the Aztec people. As he passes by, a gentle voice calls out to him, Juan Diego, Juan Dieguito, my beloved son. The tenderness of her voice draws him and Juan Diego walks in the direction of the call. When he comes to the top of the hill of Tepeyac, Juan Diego sees a lady of glowing beauty. Her dress radiated like the sun, and her face had an expression of love and compassion. She said to him, Juanito, Juan Diego, my dearly beloved son, where are you going? He tells her that he's on his way to church for religious instruction. To his surprise, the lady has a request and that is for Juan Diego to ask the bishop to have a temple built there where she is standing. The story tells of Juan Diego's repeated attempts in communicating the lady's request to the bishop and of the bishop's refusal to believe in Juan Diego and the lady's request. Juan Diego felt defeated and belittled by the bishop's rejection. He returns to the hill of Tepeyac and pours his heart out telling the lady that he has failed and that she should entrust this mission to someone else. The lady answered him, Listen, my son, the smallest of my children, you who are vulnerable, I want you to understand that I have many servants and messengers to whom I can entrust this message, but I want your help in fulfilling my request. The story concludes with the bishop still refusing to believe that Juan Diego is telling the truth. The bishop requests that the lady send him proof. The lady sends Juan Diego to the top of the hill to gather roses that are blooming in the dead of winter. Juan Diego gathers the roses and returns to the bishop's residence. Once he is ushered into the bishop's presence, Juan Diego unfolds his tunic with the roses. As he does so, the roses fall to the ground and upon the woven tunic appears the image of the lady, or as she is known today, Our Lady of Guadalupe. This miraculous image is a sign of her embrace and protection of the defeated and humiliated indigenous people. It is this story that is emblazoned upon the heart of the Latino community, and which is the story of a defeated nation that finds comfort, consolation, and loving affirmation in Our Lady of Guadalupe. It is beneath her star-covered mantle that this defeated nation finds its identity as a dignified people that are worthy of respect. Our Lady of Guadalupe is a sign of hope and a founding moment for this new race and for generations to come. On December the 12th, across the Latin American world, and throughout the Hispanic neighborhoods in the United States, Our Lady of Guadalupe is remembered with love, gratitude, and pride. She is a mother that accompanies suffering people. For decades, she has been a sign of hope and courage for the dispossessed. Farm workers carried her image with them in their struggle for justice. She is painted on the walls of poverty-stricken neighborhoods. Along the borders of the U.S. and Mexico, her image has accompanied those fleeing from abuse, 
political instability, and those who seek a better future. A mural of Our Lady of Guadalupe with the child Jesus handing out food to the hungry is painted on the walls of La Casa de los Pobres, a community kitchen in Tijuana. The words Our Lady of Guadalupe spoke to Juan Diego almost 500 years ago hold as true today as they did then. Hear me and understand well, my little son, that nothing should frighten or grieve you. Let not your heart be disturbed. Do not fear that sickness, nor any other sickness or anguish. Am I not here who is your mother? Are you not under my protection? Am I not your health? Are you not happily within my fold? What else do you wish? Do not grieve nor be disturbed by anything. At the break of dawn on every December 12th, men and women celebrate their love for the dark-skinned mother of the poor as she accompanies them again and again.